what? Identity. Our true identity in Christ. It is so important that we know who we are in Christ Jesus, uh, what's been given to us. Because if you don't know who you are, then you don't know what you are. We're powerful. We're anointed of God. Uh, we've been placed into um, the son into sonship. We've been given power and authority and anointing. Amen. And so we just we just thank God for all that He is, all He's done, every way He's made, and we just truly bless the name of the Lord. Tonight we're going to start with First Corinthians chapter two. And verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. Praise you, sweet Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody got your sword, got your word, you ready tonight? <laughs> Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2. Verse 16, and we're going to read it together. Amen. Ready? Ready? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Corinthians 2. Verse 16, let's read together. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. My goodness, we have the mind of Christ. And so it's just letting you know tonight, you know, we, we, yesterday at Healing School, we talked about tradition and how tradition affects your ability to receive healing and tradition, you know, believe in things that are not scripturally based or scripturally sound will hinder um, you being able to receive from God because it places doubt. Uh, and so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So if you don't know what the word of God says and you're just simply repeating what you've heard someone else say, then there, there's, there's no basis for your faith because our faith is the word of God. And the word of God only. Amen. Amen. The word of God only. Faith comes only one way. Amen. And that's by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. The God kind of faith comes by hearing. And he says in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16, he says, For who have known the mind of the Lord? that he may instruct him that we have, but we have the mind of Christ. And a lot of people will say, well, you never know what God's going to do. Uh, it's, it's, you can't understand the Lord. But God says we have the mind of Christ. And that God will show us. I have the living Bible, and it says, how could they? For who can know what the Lord is thinking? Who can give him counsel? But we can understand these things. For we have the mind of Christ. We can do something with the way we think. We can control our thoughts. Amen. We can control our thoughts. Thoughts come, but you don't have to let those thoughts dominate you. The Bible says that we should think on whatsoever is holy, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Y'all do me a favor, uh, shift over here. Shift on this side. Come on. Thank you ever so much. We can, we can control what we think. Because whatever you give your attention to, whatever you have going before your eyes on a constant basis will be what you will think about. So the Bible tells us to think on whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is pure, whatever is just. Amen. He said, if there be any virtue, 
and if there be any power to think on these things. So it's important what you allow your mind to think on. It's important what you give your attention to. But he said, we have the mind of Christ. Not we're going to get the mind of Christ, but when you're born again, you receive the mind of Christ. Everything that Christ has is ours. It's in our spirit. It's in, the problem, I think, with the church has been, but now, you know, we're getting revelation, is how to draw out of our spirit into um, the soulish realm or into the natural realm, what's in the spirit. I like the way Pastor Rex Fell said this. He says in that scripture in Hebrews where it says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you might receive help and mercy. He said that is an invitation to your soul because your spirit is already seated in heavenly places. So he's inviting your soul to come and to partake of the word of God so that you can know the mind of Christ. You can know who you are. You can know what you have. Amen. So the Bible says that our spirit is saved immediately when we confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Our soul is being saved. It comes by renewing the mind with the word of God. And one day our bodies, when Jesus comes to catch us away, then our bodies will be glorified. Amen. Your spirit is saved. Your soul is being saved. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. Amen. And your body will be saved, glorified. Amen. Amen. But he said, right now, I have the mind of Christ. That means I can control what I think. I don't have to just uh, let my mind just go off wherever it wants to go. And when thoughts come that does not line up with the word of God, I have the authority and I have the power to cast those thoughts down. Because if I entertain those thoughts, if I entertain those thoughts, then those thoughts may lead to some type of action. So it is critically important. Well, it don't matter what I look at. Yes, it does. It matters what you look at. It matters what you give your attention to. It matters where you go. Amen. Because he said, I have the mind of Christ. That means God says I'm his beloved, so I have the ability to to know that I'm his beloved. His word says that I'm the righteousness of God. My mind can accept the fact that I'm the righteousness of God. I don't have to. You know, you've heard some people, well, I can't help the way I think. Yes, you can. Because he said we have the mind of Christ. Well, what does Christ think about? Things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that are just, things that are holy. We can live a holy life like God's called us to. You know, I'm so amazed sometimes just to hear people talk, and it's almost like God dropped us down here in this earth and left us completely defenseless against the enemy. That is just simply not true. God has given us weapons for any attack that the enemy would try to bring against us because, believe me, we don't need any weapons in heaven. You don't even need faith in heaven. All the things that God has given us to live and to to, uh, war against the enemy, it is here in the earth. Amen? It's here in, because when we leave earth and go to heaven, we're only going to be there for a short period of time. And then he's bringing that kingdom back down to the earth. So we need to just go ahead on and learn how to live in earth. So you can't control your mind. You can't control what you think because what you feed is what will grow. Amen. Well, you know, and some people, they they look at a lot of uh, things that are so perverted, and then they wonder why their thoughts are perverted. That's because you become, become a product of whatever you see and whatever you give your attention to. But thank God, he said, I now have the mind of Christ. Before you were born again, you had no ability to control anything. You didn't have the power or the anointing to do it. But once you got born again, the, whole, the, the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ moved on the inside of you. The same spirit, the same Holy Ghost that gave Jesus the ability 
to obey his father to the fullest while he was on earth, that's the same Holy Ghost as in you. Right now, the same Holy Ghost. And he's here to do in, in us what he did in Jesus. Help us to fulfill what God has called us to do. Help us to live above the beggarly elements of this world. Help us to think right, to act right, to do right. Amen. He didn't fail with Jesus. And I decree and declare, he ain't going to fail with us. Same Holy Ghost. Same Holy Ghost. Same power. That's 1 Corinthians 2 and 16. says, I have the mind of Christ. Say that. I have the mind of Christ. See, I'm not going to ask you to talk to your neighbor. You need to talk to yourself. I have the mind of Christ. Praise God. Now we're going to 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 16. Just learning who we are in Christ Jesus, allowing the Bible to tell us who we are. How many of you know that Jesus made us, created us, and so he knows who we are? He knows what it takes for us to live victorious in this earth. Amen. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16. Everybody have it? Let's see, I got the living as well. We're going to read it together. You got ready? Everybody ready? Okay. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. I need some kind of response. I need some kind of feedback. Let's go. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Wow. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now that Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit dwelleth in you. My living Bible says, don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? Every last one of us in here, or everybody in here is born again. Oh, hallelujah. You know how hard it is to, to have a service and everybody is, is saved and spirit-filled and loving God? Woo! Can you have a pat on the back tonight? We're a majority tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it says, don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God? Your body, Jesus no, is no longer living in tents. Uh, <laughs> he's no longer behind the veil. He moved out of all of that stuff. When Jesus died and, and, came to, and he came to live on the inside of us. So that makes your body a holy place. That means that you have been purchased with the precious shed blood of Jesus Christ. Believe it or not, you do not own yourself. Selah. You do not own yourself. As the temple of God, when we come to a realization of who's living on the inside of us, you know how it is sometimes uh, you have a great deal of respect for someone. And have you ever heard, had somebody in your presence and they say something or use some profanity or use a word and they say, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, you know. That what they're saying is, I, I respect you too much to say that in your presence. Well, we're carrying somebody holier than that on the inside of us. And when we do realize that the Holy Ghost himself lives on the inside of us, it will change the things that we do with his body. Let that marinate there for a little bit. I know you thought you was your, you know, I can't wait till I get grown so I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. Your body is the temple. It's the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. It's where he's working from. 
It's where he's representing who God is and what all God did for us. You are on display. Your body is where he's living. That's why when your spirit leaves out, when your spirit leaves your body, it falls to the ground. That temple no longer is usable for God. It just falls to the ground. Amen. But your body, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. So we need to ask God when we start doing stuff, and I say we, we need to ask God, is this pleasing to you? Is this something you would have me to do? Because after all, this is your body. We need to ask him what to put in it, what not to put in it. And when he tell us, don't eat that, don't drink that, don't, don't whatever you're doing. And he said, you know, and I, I'm, I'm putting me right in it. When we get a realization that we don't own ourselves and that we're going to have to give an account of our stewardship, we're in management. And God is expecting us to watch over his house with the greatest of care, take care of it, you know, so he can live in it. And he wants to live a long time in it. He don't want you cutting him short in her. He wants to live a long time in you because he wants to spread this glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And it says, no, don't you realize that all of you, it's amazing, every last one of us in here tonight are the temple of the living God. Let's think about that. We're all the temple. He's living in you, Stefan. He's living in you, Laura. He's in you, Machavia. He's in you, my Eric. He's in you, Tim. Everybody in the room. You are God's habitation. The Holy Ghost himself, you are a carrier. You are a carrier tonight. Now, when we begin to practice the presence of God and realize that, that he's on the inside of us and we don't want to do anything to grieve him, it will change how you live. It will change what you do. It will change where you go. It will change what you look at. It will change what you entertain. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all don't look too excited about that. <laughs> Think it's going to cut out on some of your fun. Hallelujah. <laughs> some of y'all looking like, move on off of that now. Just, just, just you're doing all right till you got, got to this point where you're talking about I don't own myself. I, shoot. <laughs> no, no. This is why we always want the truth of God's word. When your children go out, they are a representation of you. I don't care how well you train them at home. If they go out and act ugly, they embarrass you. And that people gonna look, they're not going to look at the kids. They say, and the first thing come out of their mouth is something we all say. What do we say? Ain't got no kind of home job. You done beat them before you ever left the house. <laughs> and they look at the kids and they, they look at the parent and they say they must not be or whatever. So we don't want the world looking at us, and we say that we're born-again believers, and they can't tell the difference from us and the world. We say what they say. We live like they do. We engage in what they engage. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it may cost you some lonely time. Because folk that ain't sold out to God, that you ain't going to have to worry about <coughs> running them off, they just ain't going to come around. <coughs> Praise God, trying to choke me out, but it ain't going to happen. <coughs> We're the temple of God. Holy Ghost lives on the inside of me. Father, help me to become aware every day that I'm carrying you inside of me and everything that I do I make you a part of it Whew. you don't think that would change some of the things you do and I'm telling you it's not a bad thing to have the king of glory himself living on the inside of you because he's not a don't God he's a do God Gives you wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and power. And I mean, he'll make you smarter than the world. 
Amen. Amen. So when you realize that I'm carrying the anointing, I'm carrying the Holy Ghost himself. I am the temple of God. His spirit lives in me. Say that I am, I am. a temple of God. Thank you, sweetheart. <clears throat> Let's do it again. This is, this is our Bible study. <clears throat> Let's say it again. First Corinthians on your paper. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Let's read it together. I am a temple of God. Hold right there. Just let that marinate there for just a minute. I am a temple of God. Let's go. His spirit lives in me. Now, who's his spirit? The Holy Spirit. Wow. His spirit lives in me. I'm the temple of God. Wow, to think that he would want to come and live on the inside of man, a holy God. And that makes you a holy people. Amen. We're the temple of God. That choked some of y'all out, but you're going to be okay. <laughs> First Corinthians 6 and verse 11. I want to know the truth. I haven't always wanted to know the truth. I haven't always wanted to live the truth. But now that I'm realizing what a great profit and advantage it is to live it, and as you get older, as you get older, it, it makes a difference. Life, when you're young, you're, you're invincible. You, you think you're going to live forever, Brother Terry. Nothing, you're just going to live. And once you started aging gracefully, amen, and have some bumps and bruises and get knocked down a few times, life begins to take on a different meaning, amen. I, I've, I don't expect Stefan and, and Eric and Tip and even Laurel, Chavy done been bumped a few times. She done moved up a degree. I don't expect them to understand like we have because we've been around the mountain a few times, fell off a few times, and so now life is much more dear. Amen. But this, I would like to tell you like my mom used to say, just keep living. Just keep living. You'll get to that point. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. <clears throat> you have it? Let's read it together. Have it. Come on. And such were some of you, but you are what? Well, let's back up. Starting at the, uh, yeah, let's go back up to, let's start at nine. Everybody got it? Let's start at verse 9 and come down. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now here's 11, here's our hope. Oh, come on, read it with joy. And such were, underline were.
Come on. And such were some of you. But you are washed. But you are sanctified. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. He said, now these up here, he's talking about this is how you were before you became a born-again believer. But now you've been washed in the blood. Now you've been cleansed. Now you've been sanctified. Now you've been set apart. Amen. And it's just as if this lifestyle never, ever happened in your life. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Let's see what the Living Bible says. It says, don't you know, verse 9, that those who do wrong will have no share in the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin, who are idol worshipers, adulterers, male prostitutes, homosexuals, thieves, greedy people, <laughs> drunkards, abusers, and swindlers, none of these will have a share in the kingdom of God. There was a time when some of you were just like that. But now, your sins have been washed away, and you have been set apart for God. You have been made right with God because of what the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God have done for you. Isn't that, oh, y'all need to smile. All that past life is over and gone. Now, there's a difference in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven is where the throne of God is. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing and being right, of living in, in liberty and joy. You can't partake. You know, you can't live a happy life when you know you're doing things dishonorably. You know, if you're a thief, you're always looking over your shoulder, you know, thinking somebody's going to catch you or anything. But now since we have the mind of Christ, and now since we're the temple of the Holy Ghost, now we've been washed, now we've been cleansed, now we've been sanctified, now we've been set apart, and now we can participate fully because of the precious Holy Ghost that's living on the inside of us. Thank God for grace. That's, that's the gospel. That's the good news. He didn't leave you in that state. Hallelujah. And he's already dealt with the sin problem. God has already dealt with the sin problem. See, when we talk about sin, we start naming certain things. But when God talks about the sin problem, he's talking about the sin nature. When I moved in you, I moved out that old sin nature, and I put in my righteousness nature. So now your body and stuff's got to catch up with who you are in the spirit. He's not telling you you're not going to heaven. It's not what he's telling you. You cannot fully enjoy being a believer doing things that you know go against the word of the living God. And since you have the mind of God, you can't change. You can't stop. Because you got the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. God never asked us to do anything in and of ourselves. I don't know how to do right if he don't show me how to do right. I don't know how to think right. I don't know how to go in and come out. I don't know how to treat nobody if God don't show me. And then once he show me, I've got to be willing to obey and to change whatever he tells me needs to be changed. And since he bought me with his own precious blood, then he has a right to tell me what to do. Because his thoughts toward me are thoughts of good and not of evil. Once you make, come to an understanding that God is a good God, he's a good father, all the plans and things he has for you are plans and thoughts to bless you, to prosper you, to increase you, to heal you. Once you know somebody really love you, when they give you instructions, even though it may come through correction, if you know they really love you, you can accept that because what they're telling you is trying to save you from some hurt down the road. That's why you got to know you're a son of God. 
And God loves you with an everlasting love. You're all he thinks about. You're the reason he sent Jesus. Glory to God. And Jesus at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession. He's telling you you're a champion. You're a son of God. You're the righteousness of God. You're better than that. You can overcome that. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You can't do this. I will help you. That's what he's doing. He's cheering us on. He is our greatest supporter. It's our champion. And I, I'm never going to leave you. I'm going to go on with you all. I'm not going halfway and stop. I'm in it for the long haul. I'm going all the way. Woo. So no matter where I find myself, I'm never without help. I'm never without support. Glory to God. I'm never without the power to do what's right. Never without the power and the anointing of God to do what's right. And I ain't got no problem hollering help. Ah, glory to God. I ain't got no problem saying, Lord, this thing seemed too big for me. Will you help me? He'll get right under there and undergird you and lift you up and cheer you on and show you how to get out of it, show you what to do. Amen. Glory to God. Woo, because after all, he's alive and living on the inside of you. We're washed with the water of the word of God. We're justified just as if nothing ever happened in your life, just as though you were always born again. Sanctify me. He set you apart for his service through the precious Holy Spirit. I belong to God. Say that. I belong to God. Spirit, soul, and body. Now, you, you try saying that to yourself for 21 days straight. She want to change some things. She wants some things fall off of you. Let me say us so y'all won't think I'm pointing the fit. She wants some things fall off of us because it will. Ooh, y'all happy about that? <laughs> Ooh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 is just like 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, but we'll go ahead and look at it since it's on the page. See, we're already in 6, aren't we? Let's run on down here to 19 and see. Oh, praise God, see what it says. How many of y'all want to know the truth? How many of you know that there's a much greater and better life that God has for us than what we're living? Hallelujah. And I to show me how to get there. Amen. Hallelujah. He has the plans and he knows what I need to do, where I need to be. Amen. I trust the love he has for me. I trust the love that God has for me. And I, I've done away with the law. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. Let's read it together. What? That's a question mark. What? You know, like somebody would say something to you, what? They make statements, he's like, what? Come on. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you? Y'all thought I was just saying that, didn't you? I got that from God. <laughs> you are not your own. Verse 20. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Oh, just let see what the living Bible says. Run away from sexual sin. Ooh, no other sin. So clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Oh, you're sinning against the very body of God. Or don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. Can't get much plain than that, can you? <laughs> you do not belong 
unto yourself. For God bored you with a high price. Ooh. So you must honor God with your body. God paid the very best he had for you, his very own son, Jesus. Can you imagine what your price is? What, what your value is to God? He gave you the very best heaven had to purchase you. And you know, with us just being... You ain't going to pay the same amount of money for a zirconium that you'll pay for a diamond. That wouldn't be smart, would it? You're not going to pay for that. If you go to a car lot and you buy a car and you go to drive out and they say, we ain't going to give you no steering wheel. You say, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. I got to have my steering wheel. They say, well, okay, we Give you a steering wheel, but we give you no tire. Wait, look here, I bought the whole car. I want the steering wheel. I want the tires. I want the windshield, the wipers. I want the seats, the CB. In other words, I want every oh shake it up, boo. I want everything I paid for. <laughs> this I purchased you. I bought you, and I want money. I want. I want back on my investment. And see, what is so beautiful about it is that he said, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost and put him on the inside of you to help your value stay up there. And then I'm going to show you how to do it, and I'm going to help you with what you can't do. You can't get no better deal than that. My God, that's like buying a car and they tell you, we're going to pay your insurance. We're going to pay uh, for all the service on your car. All you got to do is drive it. Woo! That's what God said. All you need to do is just drive it. Just get in and let me drive it over here. Let me drive it over. Now, if I tell you don't go down that street, don't argue with me. Don't go down that street. All you got to do is just ride and drive. Cut the air on when it's, when it's hot. Cut the heat on when it's cold. You ain't got to worry about the upkeep or anything. I'm taking care of all that. He said, I'll bought you so since he paid such an awesome price for us does he not have the right since you bought that car I can't go out there I don't know what Dick and Terry and them riding in tonight they got some nice rides I can't go out there and tell them what to do I don't care what to ride I don't have the right he owns that truck or they own that car. I don't have no right to tell him. Well, in the same manner, how do you get on telling God what he needs to do with his body? Since he bought it, paid for it, doing the upkeep on it, <laughs> Something to think about, isn't it? Mm. Well, I tell you what, God, I I just really, uh, I just don't, I just ain't feeling it. He said, well, I wasn't feeling going to the cross. That's why I struggled in the garden. And my sweat looked like drops of blood. But I had to bring my soul to what my spirit do had to be done. To bring y'all back to the family of God. I knew how much my daddy wanted y'all back into the place you were before the fall. And my love was so great for him, I went past my feelings. I went past my feelings. No matter what discomfort it caused you, you should be willing to go past your feelings. Since he's paid such a high price for you and I. Glory to God. Move on, Pastor. Move on. But we, if we got to get a good understanding. 
Because if you get a good understanding, ain't nobody going to have to watch you. Ain't nobody going to have to be keep talking to you about anything. You come into that realization for yourself, a reality of who you're carrying yourself. A lot of people right now, they wouldn't even, and we're not even, we talk about things. There are certain things that you would do outside you wouldn't even think about doing in here. Why? This ain't nothing but a building. I know this church. No, you the church. This is just a building that we come together, and it only becomes holy when the church, you and I, walk in it. When we leave out, it's just a building. Y'all getting the watered-down version. I got the pure raw earlier. Don't tell me you can't exercise. Don't tell me you can't control what you're eating. Don't tell me when I tell you to go to bed at a certain time and you stay up. That's disobedience. Because I built your body and I know what it takes to keep it in optimum level. You break it down and you bring it to me and I fix it up and you go back and do the same old crazy stuff again and it breaks down again and then you, then you got the audacity to say, I don't know why God won't heal me. Amen. When we come to this realization and this reality, it will literally change your life. Will change my life. He said, don't even talk to me about no diet. He said, just take it a day at a time. Trust me for every meal. I'll tell you what to put in your mouth, and I'll tell you what not to eat. Then I'll help you. So I'm without excuse. <laughs> I'm without excuse. If I'm not without excuse, come on, come on, come on. Thank you. I want to make him proud. I do. I want to live as long as he wants me to live. And I don't want to live broke down. I don't. I, I want to live. I want to get up every day. And I, I want to feel good. I do. I want to feel good. I don't want to have to live off of pills and all that. I want to live right and I want to live good. Amen. And when you follow his instruction, it will get you there. I got an elliptical for Christmas, and we're getting acquainted. <laughs> he said, you asked me for one. I'm sitting there the other, and I said, I don't mind telling on me. <laughs> Thank God I'm not to finish work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I ain't going to never tell nobody I got it all together because I, I am under construction. I'm being processed and groomed. Amen, but I'm willing. And I got it in a couple of days. It sat there and I looked at it. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there. He said, uh, didn't you ask me for that? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> didn't you ask me for that? Yes, sir. I just got up and got right. I said, okay, let's get acquainted, baby. Let's get acquainted. Every day we're getting acquainted. Amen. And God will help you. Just live one day at a time. You know, when you start trying to, well, I tell you what, all month long, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Today, Lord, he said his grace is sufficient for that day. See, some of us, you'll get overwhelmed when you try this life. Now, I tell you what. You got people right now, and I'm not talking about them. God knows I'm not. They've been fasting for, they fast for the first 21 days. I'm off of sugar. I'm not eating meat. After them 21 days old, every cow by the head for the heels. And see, God doesn't want us doing that every day. And, and it's eating with me. I don't know. I don't know what yours is. But every day, 
trust God to give you instructions that day. His grace is sufficient that day. When I get up in the morning for breakfast, ask God, what should I eat for breakfast? Then when it comes lunch, what should I eat for lunch? See, I don't need to be worrying about what I'm going to eat Friday. Today is just Wednesday. Because see how you can get overwhelmed? You, you, you start, you know, an elephant, you just one bite at a time. A mountain, you just one step at a time. But when you, when you try to, uh, you know, if you can't jump three feet, how you tell God you're going to jump 20? You hadn't jumped three yet. And just take it a day at a time. And even if you perhaps don't make it, don't get under condemnation. Just get up and let's keep going. Just get up and let's try it again. Just get up, just keep getting up. The thing is to keep getting up. The thing is to keep doing it. The thing is to keep staying with it. It will pay off. I, I, I'm here to tell you because God don't lie. His word will produce whatever he sent it to produce. We just got to get an agreement and believe it. Just because it's already so. Amen. Woo, we got all that out of I'm a temple of God. Let's go on your page. It has 2 Corinthians 12 and 27, but there is no 27th verse in 2 Corinthians. It's 1 Corinthians. See why it's important? You know, anybody can, no, now they didn't deliberately misprint this. It's just a mistake. That's why you need to carry your Bibles. You need to have your own Bibles. You need to follow. When I give a scripture, you need to follow. I just appreciate James so last year. He says, Apostle, you skip one. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 27. Everyone have it? Let's read it together. Now. Stop right there. When? Now. When? Now. now. Come on. You are the body of Christ and members in particular. The Living Bible says, now all of you together are Christ's body, and each one of you is a separate and necessary part of it. You are necessary tonight. I, I said, I said, I said, you are necessary tonight. You are important to the Father God. You are, all of us together, make up the body of Christ. Every joint supplies. So I can say it like this and not take away from scripture. When you don't show up, something ain't supplied. Have you ever thought about it? Think about a, a football team. Say you're the quarterback. You got a big game. Everybody there but you. You think something's going to not be supplied? Something's not going to be missed? I know they have others that get stepped, but you're the main quarterback. You, you're the one that team counting on. Well, each one of you God's counting on. All of you quarterback status. Let's settle there for a minute. You are necessary. Never let anybody make you think you have And you are not a necessary part of what is taking place in the end times. Because you are. We're all together. When we say lifeline ministry and we all come together, amen. Every joint is supplying. Somebody's alto, somebody's tender, somebody's soprano, somebody's a deacon, somebody this, somebody's an usher, somebody's a praise, a dancer. We all in it all make. It's kind of like having, having a dinner and you tell it to come and everybody said well what dish do I need to bring if everybody bought potato salad would be much of a dinner would it somebody need to bring some kind of meat some kind of vegetable some kind of dessert some kind of drink now we got a what we got a meal we got let one have a song let one have a hymn glory to God let one have a word of prophecy a word of wisdom a word of knowledge 
Every joint supply it. That's why when you, when you join anywhere, and we, we don't have members because members come and go. We got disciples. A member just hop up and go whenever they feel like it. Don't let nobody know where you're at. And don't ask me because it ain't none of your business. But a disciple, Jesus said he was making disciples. See, that's what's wrong with a lot of congregations. Now you got members. And see, you, you, you do that like you do the club. You a member of this, and you go when you want to go. You don't go when you don't want to go. See, there go that feeling again. That'll get you in a world of trouble. When you, you understand, I'm going because I, I, I just might miss something. You never know. The Lord, how many of you even think that the Lord might even want to use me today? How many of you even let that thought even go through your mind? That the Lord might want, you may be sitting there, and, and Tip, you might be sitting there, and, and Eric might be struggling with something. He'll say, Tiffany, because you're part of the body, and you're necessary. He'll say, Tiffany, go over there and put your arms around my Eric. And just tell her you love. Ask her what's wrong. See, expect God. He want to use you. That's, that's why he don't like big eyes and all this here kind of stuff. When you come to church, expect God. God could use that beautiful smile to turn somebody's world upside down. God could use that hug to bring comfort to So Expect God to you. You're not something useless. You're not just... You're not just showing up just to be showing up. You have something in you to give, something in you to supply, something in you that makes this house great. All of us have something to supply, something to give. Amen? He said, all together, we're Christ's body. 2 Corinthians 2 and 15. I'm going to move a little swiffer here. Are you being blessed? Are, are, you, are you really seeing your worth and your value? You're not members. You're disciples of Christ. You're disciplined ones. Disciples are disciplined ones. 2 Corinthians 2 and 15. Thank God for 2020 vision. Praise God. Well, bless the Lord. Trying to see where we start because that's really just. Um, let's look at. Um, let's just start with verse 14. We'll do 14 and 15. Might be enough to pull us where we need to be. You have it? Okay, let's read it together. As also. Beg pardon? Where I am? Well, if I get out of one, I might see. I'm like, <laughs> ah! Who <Lord> Jesus? <laughs> Who bless the name of the Lord? Hey, I was just testing y'all. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay, now it makes sense. I just kept looking. I'm like, that's not what I saw today. Why is it? Okay. Let's just do 14 anyway. <laughs> Let's go. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. In the living Bible, I guess I'm in the right place. Our lives are a fragrance presented by Christ to God. Our lives are a fragrance 
presented by Christ to God. But this fragrance is perceived differently by those being saved and by those perishing. To those who are perishing, we are a fearful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. What that means is there are people that don't want any part of God. To them, we just, you know, you get on their nerves. They don't want to hear nothing about that. But to people that are being saved, oh, when you talk about Jesus, it's just a sweet fragrance. It, it just delights the heart of God. They rejoice in that. They want to hear. The more you tell them, the more they want to hear. But people that don't want God, don't want to, to them, you're the smell of death. They get under, con, under conviction. They don't want to hear. They don't, and so stop getting mad at folk when they don't want to hear about Christ. When you go and want to talk to people about the Lord, and they tell you, I don't want to hear that, just shake the dust and move on, continue to pray for them. Amen. You can't make anybody want God. Amen. And just allow God to lead you. God wants all men to be saved. That is his heart's desire, is that man everywhere. When, it's, when the Bible says that salvation has appeared unto all men, it means that it has been made available to all men, but all men will not receive it. He's not withholding salvation from anyone. There is not a man, woman, boy, or girl that has ever lived upon the face of this earth. God said hell was created for the devil and his angels. It was never created to be inhabited by man because it's a place of torment. That's why he sent Jesus to see to it that we don't go to that place. But a lot of people, even though salvation has been presented, everybody have not taken advantage and received the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you talk to people that don't want Christ or want to do wrong, to them you get on their nerves. You're a holy roller. You think you're better than anybody else. But to people that's looking for hope and looking for life, when you tell them you are sweet perfume, you're a sweet fragrance, it comes up before God as a sweet fragrance in his nostrils. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Let's just read off a paper. We're going down. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Let's just read off the paper. I am a new creation. Do you notice he didn't say patched up, patched over? <laughs> new. It's a difference than going on the car lot to the used and the new. What's the difference? Kind of self-explanatory. Somebody else doesn't use that used one. It might be in good shape. I bought Few, several of my cars have been used, and they, they were good. But if I'd have had my preference, I'd tell, give me that one right there on the showcase, Stephon. Give me that one. Turn it around on that thing right there. Let me drive it out of. That's what he said. He said, in your spirit, I made you brand new. When you asked me to come into your heart, I made you brand new. Everything that was ever a part of you, ever attached to you, I cast that out, and you now have a brand spanking new recreated spirit, and I'm living in there. Now, by nothing you, nothing made over, you're brand new. You got the mind of Christ. You can think the thoughts of Christ. Isn't that wonderful? 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. I am righteous in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. A reconciliation. When you, when you talk, when you see two friends and, and they, they've come uh, to a place where they're not speaking and they're not talking, and if you love both of them, your heart desires to do what? Put them back together. That's reconciliation. That's what Jesus did. He came and reconciled us back to the Father. He said, I know they've messed up. He said, but let me die in their place. Let me take the full brunt of that because I want them. I know you want them back. So let me reconcile. Let me be the bridge that they can cross back over to you. That's reconciliation. And as an ambassador, that means you have been sent from one place to another place to represent where you were sent from. And since we're ambassadors, of God and we have been deployed from the kingdom of God we have no personal opinions about 
It's already written in our Constitution. We are to merely carry out what's written in the Constitution. It don't matter what I think about anything. Does it agree with the Word of God? As an ambassador, if I do not say what God tells me to say, I can be recalled. There are a lot of folk out here speaking for God, and they've been recalled. They're driving without a license. They're not saying what God say. They've changed law. Did y'all hear about the Methodist church getting ready to split? One of the biggest organizations, Christian organizations, they're getting ready to split because they want to uh, have homosexual pastors. One part do and one part don't, so they're going to split. Now, when you ask me what do I think about it, it don't matter what I think because I didn't die and I didn't bleed and I'm not Jesus and I'm not going to be the judge. Let me take you to the Constitution and let's see what it says. Then whatever it says, that's my opinion if I'm born again, if I'm of God, and if I'm speaking for God. I don't care how many I got in my family. <laughs> The word of God. Well, Apostle, what do you think? Well, we get married in three months, and we're just going to go ahead and live together. What you think? I think what God thinks. Well, you know, they did me wrong, and so uh, I think I ought to get them back. What you think? You go to the Constitution. See, when you start taking people to the world, stop being so free with what you think and what you think don't agree with what's been said. The law's already on the books. It's already written. And God's not going to change it for you, me, or anybody else. That's if you are an ambassador. I don't want to be recalled. I don't want to drive without a license. Hallelujah. I want to fly with all the Godhead back in me. Hallelujah. Galatians 3.13. Glory to God. I'm redeemed from the curse. I am redeemed from the curse. The curse is what? Anything that doesn't benefit you. Let's just sum it up. Sickness is a curse, poverty, anything that, because the word of God says he has blessed us with all blessings in heavenly places. So a curse is anything that works against a blessing. In, in Healer's School, we were talking about <laughs> traditions yesterday. If one of the traditions that people pray, if it be thy will. If anybody come to lay hands on you, if you're sick and they start talking about if it be your will, get their hands off, don't let them pray. Because that lets you know they don't know what will of God is. There ain't no faith present. Ain't nothing going to happen. You ain't even ready to pray till you know what the word of God says. And then you return that word and that word only back to God. And that's when faith is present. That's when the Holy Ghost goes to work to see to it that the word of God comes to pass. Your word will come to pass when it's what God has said. So we've been redeemed from the curse. I was reading about Balak and Balaam. Balaam. And he kept trying, Balak kept trying to get Balaam to curse the people of God. And everywhere he would take them, Balaam would open his mouth and he would bless the people. He said, I told you to curse them. He said, God has blessed and I cannot reverse. Every time he opened his mouth, instead of cursing, he spoke blessing. He said, I told you, if you gave me, I don't know how many millions in silver, and it gave me half of your castle, I, I'm under assignment from God, and I could only say what he says. I had posted on Facebook, there was a picture of, of, of well, who they say Jesus is. See, I don't have any, y'all notice, I, I don't have none of them pictures. <laughs> Ain't none going to be hung. Because that's one thing that the enemy has used to bring division. Because if you're a black person and you feel like 
the white man is your enemy, he's racist. Well, you look at a white Jesus, you think ain't no help there. That's why he said, no, no man after the flesh. I want to see Jesus in the word, his spirit. I don't care if it polka dot. <laughs> it really don't matter to me. It truly doesn't matter to me. And so the enemy will use all this stuff, anything he can use to bring division. Anything. We were laughing and talking this afternoon, and uh, this pastor told me, he said, you know what? He said, God's given you such an awesome platform in healing school. He said, you're bringing all races, ministries together. He said, what an awesome platform. He said, I can say this, and I know you won't get offended. He bring in a black woman. You know, God don't use no women to preach. <laughs> a divorced woman. Whew, that's three strikes right there. So the world says. He said, I can't wait to see what all God's going to do with you. Hallelujah. <laughs> we've been redeemed from the curse, y'all. I said we've been redeemed from the curse. And you shouldn't accept anything from the curse operating in your life. That's the next one, Ephesians 1 and 1. Oh, my God. That'll get you thrown out of half the churches. Because we think of a saint as being a person that never make any mistakes. You're a saint in your spirit. You're a saint because he says you're a saint. See, a lot of times we're basing uh, whether we're holy or not on our actions. You're holy because the Holy One lives on the inside of you. Amen? Your body has to catch up. Your mind is being reprogrammed to think a different way. Once you get saved, before you were saved, we thought like everybody else. Let me get you before you get me. All that kind of, those are natural carnal thinking. But once you get born again, then that mind, I told you that was an invitation to the soul to come and to be reprogrammed, to have new data put in you, to have the mind of Christ put in you. That takes time. I am a saint. Say it again. I am a saint. Child, I can't say I'm no saint. Girl, I, I got problems. And, I, I, and you know what is true? Look at it. Let's go to Ephesians 1. Do you know why it's true? Anybody know why it's true? Is it true? Okay, let's look at Ephesians 1. Read, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Everything, and none of those answers was wrong. Everything that we are is true because he said so. I didn't get healed from all of the things that tried to kill me because God called me to preach because I live so right. Uh, I ain't going with nobody's husband. Uh, no. I received healing because 2,000 years ago, Jesus, I can't add nothing to it but my believing. Jesus went to the cross and died for me. It's not how perfect I live. It's not by performance. It's in this dispensation we are, the great dispensation, everything you receive is because of Jesus. 
I don't care if you ain't missed the son. I don't care if you ain't missed tither. I don't care if you ain't kicked the dog and throwed the cat out and you ain't hollered at your wife. You ain't done none of those things. None of those things is simply because of what Jesus did. Now, you should not do those things, but that's not the reason. It's simply because Jesus paid the price. Ephesians 1 and 3, I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. I'm blessed. Tell yourself I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Not going to be blessed. Not going to be blessed. Not going to be blessed. I'm blessed. Why y- y'all act like y'all was too scared to open y'all's mouth? I tell you, you get mad, you, they can hear you halfway to church, halfway to parking lot. That's what's wrong. Don't be, don't, don't be afraid to say what the word says. Look up there on that board. Look up there on that wall. God is not a man that he should lie. So when you say what God says about you, regardless of what's going on around you, what's going on around you is not what's true. What's true is what he said about it. I'm not up here at the apostle of this house because I'm the smartest knife in the draw or the sharpest. I'm here because he set me here. And whether I feel like it or don't feel like it, don't have a thing in the world to do with it. I'm simply carrying out the orders of my commander in chief. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So your rest is tied to your identity. Your rest, my rest, is tied to my identity. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. God will never hurt me. God will never hurt me. God will never hurt me. Somebody should say me either. God will never hurt me. <laughs> Amen. God want me for joy. God want me increasing in every area of my life. Glory to God. God wants my marriage to be like heaven on earth. God wants my career to be successful, me to be at the top of my game. Glory to God. That's what God wants, and if he wants it and I want it, glory to God, ain't nothing for it to happen, be but to happen. Don't be hesitant. Go me your mouth. The devil wake you up at night and tell you I'm going to kill you. Just start laughing. Just start laughing. Just start laughing. Say, Jesus took the key a death hell in the grave and guess who he gave authority to wah you have no authority here in the name of Jesus get out glory to God your true identity in Christ well did you receive tonight yes. hallelujah